Welcome to the Coin Stories podcast, where we talk about investing, hard money, Bitcoin, and how technology is revolutionizing the global economy. I'm Natalie Brunel, and I'm here to learn with you. So this is for educational and entertainment purposes only. None of the discussions should constitute as official investment advice, and you should always do your own research. Make sure you're subscribed to my page so you don't miss out on any new content. This show is made possible through partnerships with companies I trust, and I'm very picky about who I partner with. So I hope you take the time to listen to the ad reads throughout the show. First up, Swan. I partnered with Swan because it is a Bitcoin-only company that is focused on helping people save for their future and self-custody their Bitcoin. Swan can help you start a direct deposit to take advantage of Bitcoin as a savings technology and learn how to take it off the exchange. Swan's mission is to educate 10 million future Bitcoiners through free resources and media projects like the Hard Money Show. Swan also offers retirement planning with an IRA, tax loss harvesting, and a white glove private client service. I use Swan to dollar cost average, and I deposit a little bit every day that's equivalent to what I might spend on a meal so that I add to my future nest egg and lower my yearly cost basis. Swan Studios produces my hard money news reports, simplifying Bitcoin for mass audiences and documenting Bitcoin adoption around the world. To learn more and get $10 in free Bitcoin, head to swanbitcoin.com slash Natalie Brunel. All right, next up, Bitcoin Conference 2024, the world's largest Bitcoin event is headed to Nashville next year. Early bird tickets are now available and this is the lowest cost you'll be able to secure for the conference all year. And if you use the code HODL, H-O-D-L, you'll get an extra 10% off. So come join us for three great days of networking events, panels, keynotes, workshops, and more. You never know what big name might be announced when tickets are much, much higher in price. Head to b.tc slash conference and use the code HODL. And before Bitcoin 2024, the next conference I'm headed to is BitBlock Boom this August in Austin, Texas, where I'm really looking forward to speaking alongside Preston Pish, Mark Moss, and other great voices in the space. You can get your tickets at bitblockboom.com and use code HODL for 10 percent off. I'll see you there. All right, it's time for the show. Hello, I'm so excited to share this episode. It's my first ever how-to tutorial video, and who better to teach me to do something than Ben Perrin, BTC Sessions. Thank you so much for helping me. This is going to be a cold storage tutorial with cold cart. Um, I'm really proud that I have partnered with this company. I think BTC Sessions, you recommend it for cold storage hardware solutions as well. So thanks so much for joining me. I'm stoked to be here and I'm stoked to see you uh, get on your, your cold card here. Well, so let's start from the very beginning. And first, for those who may not be familiar with your background, I mean, you do these how-to sessions and tutorial videos. You've done them for all sorts of different products and services. So can you talk a little bit, just give people a summary of your background and how you got to do these videos and why you're so passionate about breaking it down in a simple way for the average audience? Yeah. Um, so I, uh, I, I started noticing Bitcoin years ago around 2014 and I was trying to learn my way through and I was, I'm, I'm a pretty visual learner. And so as I got curious about Bitcoin, I wanted to learn some of the practical stuff around it. How, you know, how do you, I set up a wallet? How do I secure my Bitcoin? And uh, a YouTube search yielded next to nothing. Um, it was really difficult to learn at the time. And oftentimes people would direct me to some message board and say, scroll down and look through the comments. And somebody wrote out a, a, a bullets point list of how to do things. That's just not how I learn. Um, so after a couple of years of tearing my hair out, trying to figure out things, um, I got comfortable enough where I decided to start making videos myself so people wouldn't have to do the same. Um, so that was 2016. And I started making step-by-step -step practical tutorials. How do you do all of the basics and now advanced stuff in and around Bitcoin? Uh, and I started doing a tutorial once a week and I haven't stopped for seven years. Uh, and so here we are. Um, I had a little bit of an education background. And by that, I mean, I taught little kids how to break dance for about a decade. Oh, uh, that's so cute. Yeah, so the, the you know, Teaching adults technology is very similar to teaching kids complex movement. So, oh, really? Uh, yeah, it it transfers over well enough as long as you know the subject material. It's the uh, same same idea. So, yeah, I've been teaching people uh, for around seven years now, um, and uh, just everything Bitcoin. 
Well, you do an amazing job. And I have to say that cold storage, it's so important, but this was one of the most intimidating aspects of Bitcoin for me, especially when I was a newcomer. Um, I just felt like taking that responsibility was a little bit intimidating and scary. Mm -hmm. And now that I've been in the the network and, and working in this ecosystem for a couple of years, I realized that it's way easier than people think. And it's also really important to take that step. Uh, I just interviewed Matt O'Dell about a week ago, and, and he had a great analogy. He said, if you can raise a kid, you can definitely store your Bitcoin in a cold storage wallet. If you can drive a car, you can do it. Um, so I hope that people, you know, take, take a video like this and see that I'm someone non-technical. I don't have a technical background, but especially with your help, I'll be able to walk through the whole thing. So we'll start from ground zero. I have a bunch of different cameras going. I'm going to try my best in terms of the edit. Um, but basically we'll go over everything you need all the equipment, we are going to, in this video, do the wired version. So there's another um, sort of even, even more secure way to put your Bitcoin on a cold card, and that is totally offline, air gap, mm -hmm. off the internet. Um, and so that we're going to do in a future video. But for now, this is sort of the more simple way to get um, acquainted with this device. And just a quick question, Ben. Why why do you recommend this cold storage wallet? Because there are so many out on the market. I know some people have been concerned about um, updates that some of the devices have had, and they just want to make sure that their Bitcoin is safe. So what are your thoughts? Why do you recommend this specific brand and device? Yeah, so uh, <clears throat> I love cold card in that it can be used very simply or it can be used in a very advanced manner. And you can actually start simple and then kind of level up your learning as you go and then start to use the device in a different manner. Um, so that's one aspect of it I love. We're gonna, again, we're gonna start simple here. And then maybe later on, we'll make the tin foil hat version of uh, using a cold card. And, and that'll be fun too. And people can level up there. Um, the other aspect about the cold card that I think is very important is even though the average person watching this won't themselves go and audit the code that governs this device and actually go and look through the lines of code that make it work the way it does, it is possible for anybody to do that. And so what that means is you have eyeballs on the code that is actually in the firmware of this device. And so if anything shady were going on, if there were something malicious in the code that might be able to steal your money, then people can actually have the opportunity to spot that and call it out and warn others about it. And so by having it open like that, where you can actually audit the source code, um, it actually protects you from, you know, if, if a, a company were malicious and were to put something into their devices that you weren't privy to, uh, you would have that canary in a coal mine of somebody seeing it. And is that unique to these devices? It depends on the device that you are getting. There are some devices on the market that are closed source, and there are some that are open, which you can actually audit. And cold card is one that is open that you can audit. Also, the cold card does have what's known as a secure element. And what that is, is on any device, on any hardware device that is securing your Bitcoin, inside the device, there's the keys that unlock your money. Basically, the keys to your money are inside any hardware wallet that you're using. Um, when, you're, when you're doing that on a device that doesn't have what's known as a secure element, um, then somebody that gets a hold of this device, not this one, but other ones, gets a hold of your device, if it doesn't have a secure element with a little bit of time and know-how, somebody can actually extract the keys to your money from the device. And that's not something that you necessarily want to happen, obviously. Uh, definitely not. No. And I actually wasn't aware of that prior to talking to NVK, who runs the company that makes these. I, I had no idea that something like that was possible. Obviously, very, very scary. And Again, I mean, not your keys, not your coins. You have to keep your Bitcoin secure. We have learned some painful lessons over the last two years, especially with some of the third parties and counterparty risk 
that has existed in the space. So um, hopefully this video will help. And last question before we we really get into it. Um, you know, some people think that when you get one of these devices, it's kind of like a hard drive for your computer. And so you take a file like an MP3 or a Microsoft Word file and you move it onto the drive and then all of a sudden it's on the drive and it's secure. That's not how Bitcoin works. Um, can you yeah. kind of break down for people what the relationship is between Bitcoin and these devices. Yes. So um, I'm, I'm sure you've mentioned in plenty of your shows before how, you know, Bitcoin is, is a global ledger of who owns what. And so another way to look at it would, would be imagine there was a giant safety deposit box in the sky and it was completely transparent. So you could look up at the sky, you could see everybody's individual box, although you don't know who owns what. You can see all the boxes and you can see all of the money that exists and, and where it's allocated. And all of the boxes have a little slot where you can always slide in more cash to somebody's box. What you have with a device like this is you have the keys to a particular box. So you can always see and you can always deposit anywhere. But unless you have the key, you can't open up somebody else's box and take money out. So the, these are the keys to your safety deposit box in the sky is effectively what this is. Um, funny enough, and we'll see this, um, you actually don't need this device to deposit money into the cold card. You don't even need to plug it in in any way, shape or form. Um, and we'll see that in practice that that safety deposit box slot mechanism. Uh, we're going to get that so that you can always add money to your cold card without ever having to plug it in again. Wow. Okay. Let's get into it. First of all, let's just go over what you're going to need. So um, if you're listening to this in audio, I'm going to put a list in the show notes. If you're watching this, I'll pop a list up as well, but you're going to need the cold card, which we recommend order this from the manufacturer. Make sure that it's not been tampered with. There are lots of companies and third parties that are starting to sell cold storage devices. You don't want to risk anything. So make sure to get it directly from the manufacturer. And we have a, a discount link in the show notes as well. You're going to need a USB-C to USB-C if you're using a Mac like me. So I've got that ready. I'm going to have uh, something to write down my seed phrase. Um, and I will be showing you guys this. If you watch this on video, it'll probably be a little bit easier to follow and understand, but uh, but maybe some people will listen on audio. And then you're also going to need a desktop application called Sparrow. So download that and we'll be showing you those visuals as well. Do I need anything else, Ben? That is it. Um, we're, we're doing the simplistic one. You just need the device, a cord and a pen and uh, and your computer and you're good. So, okay, perfect. Yeah. So let's get to cutting. I'm really excited because they now have released uh, colored versions of the cold card. So I requested a pink one. <laughs> I'm a little jealous. Um, I still have the clear ones. <laughs> and I'm going to I'm going to cut it open. So this is completely new. And so what it comes with is this little warning. And on the flip side is where you can write down your pen. Mm -hmm and your seed phrase. And you can either choose between 12 or 24 words. Obviously 24 is more secure. I'm sure we'll get mm -hmm. into to some of that. Uh, you'll also get this cool little sticker. <laughs> actually, actually, I think you get two stickers. Um, I think there's another one in here, but all right. Um, and then here is the cold card. And I'll show it on this on this camera as well. Perfect. And that's a little case on the front. It will slide right off, by the way. All right. Let's slide it out. Which way does it slide? Uh, up. Oh, up. All right. So we're sliding it off. Okay. And now it looks like a little calculator. Yeah. It's perfect. OPSEC friendly. <laughs> yeah. This is just my calculator. And yeah. is it true that with this device, you can essentially set kind of a dummy wallet where if if you were to be in duress, someone's threatening mm -hmm. you, you could say, yep, here it is. Here's here's my Bitcoin. But actually, you're directing them to a place that does not actually have all of your Bitcoin. Yeah, yeah, you can absolutely. And that's well, maybe the, that'll be an advanced thing that maybe we'll touch on at some point. But yeah, you can absolutely have a a, a pretend pin where if somebody, yeah, again, was was. Uh, holding you under duress, it would lead them to a decoy wallet where they they would get a, a pretend stash. <laughs> okay. So, okay, so um, what is the one, first thing you do? 
Yeah. So one thing that you're going to make note of, and in a second, we're going to plug in the cold card, but uh, the bag itself has a, a number on it, an identif identification number. Um, and I think if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, inside the bag, is there a little piece of plastic that also had a, a number on it? Um, there are two areas that have the number on the bag. So right okay. below the barcode and then yep. on the blue. Okay, perfect. All right. So, so that basically identifies the device um, coming from the warehouse where they actually uh, create the cold card. And when you plug in the device, it will ask you to check and verify uh, the number on the bag versus the number that will be displayed on the cold card. So I'm actually okay. going to get you to plug in the cold card now. And it should show you that. And you're going to have to, uh, because I, I can't see your phone, you, you'll have to kind of tell me what you're seeing. And then once we get all the way set up, then uh, we'll be at the same place. Okay. I'm going to plug in right now. Okay. So right now it says cold card wallet. By using this product, you are accepting our terms of sale and use. Perfect. All right. So there's going to be a few intro screens here. Just to orient yourself on the cold card, on the number pack, on the number pad, there's an up and down arrow and a side to side arrow. And that's kind of your navigation going through the menus. And then bottom left, there's an X. That's if you want to get out of something or check mark if you want to advance. And so we're going to advance forward by hitting the check mark. All right. And then that number pops up. So let's verify the number on the bag is 579, 579 on the card. 310, 310, 870, 870. 436. Your new cold card should have arrived. And then we can, I assume, punch down. Yep. Sealed in a bag with the above number. Please take a moment to confirm the number and look for any signs of tampering. And there were none. Perfect. All right. We can advance forward. Okay. So now the screen says choose pin code, advanced slash tools, bag number help. Okay. So what we're going to be doing now, we're going to be setting up uh, the pin code. And what I'd like you to show on camera, if you can, is it came with a little uh, piece of cardboard or, you know, like a little piece of paper that you're going to be recording your pin and your, uh, your seed phrase and everything on. And the way that the pin works is there's actually two parts to it. And uh, there's a, a prefix and a suffix. So there's a beginning and an end to, to the pin. Each part of the pin can be anywhere between two and six digits long. So you could have it be one, two, and then the second part be three, four, or you could have it one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. You know, don't probably don't do those ones. Do something that is uh, you'll you'll be able to remember. But again, for this demo, if you wanted, you could just have one, two, three, four, five, six on both sides of the pin. You can change it later, but okay. in order to change it, you need to know the old pin. So it's very important that when people are setting up their pin, they recall what their, their uh, and they write down what their pin is. Um, because if you don't remember your pin, the device is a brick. Okay. Right. Right. So I will, I will stress that. Please recall your pin. They're going to get you to enter it twice to confirm that you've done it correctly. So don't worry too much about that. But please do note it down. So we're going to hit choose, uh, choose pin code for with a check mark. Okay. So now on the screen, it says choose pin, pick the main wallets pin code. Now scrolling down, be more clever, but an example, one, two, three dash four, five, six, seven. Yes. It has two parts, prefix one, two, three and suffix four, five, six, seven. Each part must be between two and six digits long. Total length can be as long as 12 digits. The prefix part determines the anti-phishing words you will see each time you log in. Your new pin protects access to this cold card device and is not a factor in the wallet's seed words or private keys. There is absolutely no way to recover a forgotten pin. Write it down. Okay, hit that What check. do you suggest for people out there just in terms of, you know, essentially if they're writing something down on a piece of paper, obviously, Paper is flammable. Um, someone can drop water on it. What's your best recommendation uh, when it comes to writing down such sensitive information? So one would be obviously the cold card is is an electronic device, and if there was a fire or something, you know you, that that device gets burnt up. If you have the seed phrase stored alongside it, 
um, with the sensitive information and it's on paper and there's a fire and both those things are gone, your access to your money is gone. So one would be if it's written down, store it separately. It's very unlikely that you're going to have simultaneous fires in two different locations. So, you know, uh, segregating those two devices to different areas uh, is important. Um, but obviously, CoinKite offers uh, solutions for your seed phrase where you can stamp it in steel. Mm -hmm. And uh, and those things can go through a four alarm fire and, and be totally fine. Um, in terms of PIN, um, as it said in, in the setup there, the PIN itself does not have any bearing on on your seed phrase, on your backup to the wallet. It's just for the device. So if somebody found the device, they couldn't get into it without. So um, something that you can remember, you can jot it down, keep it separate. That's fine. Um, you don't necessarily need your pin on steel though. It's not, you're not going to lose access to your money entirely. Got it. And just remember guys, don't put something like your birthday. If someone were to get a hold of this device and they know anything about you, they're obviously going to try numbers associated with you first. So make it as difficult to rem difficult to guess for someone else, but easy for you to remember. Yeah. All right. And, so and I was just going to say a side note too. Um, the cold card gives you 13 tries to put in your pin. So, you know, if, if you accidentally mess up, you've got a fair amount of leeway, but for somebody that's just trying to put in numbers after 13, the device again is a brick. So know that you've got some safety there too. Is that the situation that we've heard about with someone who's looking for all of their Bitcoin in some sort of um, d dumpster or, you know, waste <laughs> sometimes, site yes. right now? Yeah, sometimes you'll have a, a mechanism where there's X amount of tries that you get. Um, but luckily in this situation, we will have a backup. So even if you tried 13 times, you could always go to your backup and recover your money. Okay, perfect. Yeah. All right, so um, I'm going to hit the check. Mm -hmm. It's going to give you another warning here. <laughs> warning, there is absolutely no way to reset the pin or factory reset the cold card if you forget the pin. Do not forget the pin code. Wow. Yeah. Uh, scroll down because NVK really is really concerned for you and wants you to read the whole thing. Press six to prove you read to the end of this <laughs> message. <laughs> Good job, NVK. All right. Yeah. Six. So we press six now. Enter pin prefix. All right. So this is a tester. Obviously, um, mm -hmm. you know, even if someone's watching and you're a bad actor trying to steal some Bitcoin that I put on here, this is a dummy device. Yeah. So uh, go for it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. One, two, three. And it doesn't actually show. So when you're looking at the device, um, the numbers don't show up on the screen. Yeah. Okay. So now words are coming up. Okay. So I'm going to tell you what these words are before we advance. Okay. These words are the anti phishing are anti phishing words. And so the way it will work will be every time you go to log into your device, you're going to put in the beginning of your pin. So you just did one, two, three. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Oh, I did one, two, three. Yes. Okay. So next time, like when you log into your device after it's been off, you'll type in one, two, three, and then you're going to hit the check mark and you'll see these two words. And those two words, as long as they're the same every single time, it means that you've entered the beginning of the pin correctly and that the device has not been physically tampered with. Wow. If either of those things are untrue, like if you accidentally put one, two, four and hit the check mark, the words will be different. Or if somebody actually gets a hold of your device and tampers with the circuitry inside and you type in one, two, three correctly and hit the check mark, it will still show different words. And wow. that's your canary in the coal mine. Okay. So should I write these words down on the wallet backup card? Yes. You'll write that on the wallet backup card. You can write in the one, two, three, the anti-phishing words, and then we'll move on to the next part of the pin. Okay. And just to remind everyone and to clarify, what we're doing is cold storage for a single signature, single sig. We're not doing multi-sig, but it's highly recommended to decentralize so that you don't have just one seed phrase. Um, this is something that, you know, I think once you feel a little bit more comfortable, you can get to that next advanced step. Sometimes people choose custody solutions like Unchained for that so that a company has one seed phrase, then you have another, maybe a loved one has a third and you need two out of three keys. Um, mm -hmm. But just try try not to have a single point of failure. Do you, do you agree with that? 
Yeah. Yeah. And th- I mean, this, this can be a, a step down the road, right? Like yes. if you're starting with, you know, if people are watching this, this is your first time using hardware. Don't, don't worry about like having to do that right away, but level up, you know, get comfortable with this. And then down the line, you get enough Bitcoin and, and you're like, well, I would, I would like to be a bit more secure. Then you can dive into multi-sig. <laughs> Perfect. All right. So I've written down the words. Mm-hmm. And I'm assuming that I hit check. Yes, exactly. Okay, now we're going to enter that second half of the pin. So I'm going to do four, five, six, seven. Perfect. Now it's asking for the pen pin prefix again. Okay, so basically what you've done is you said, this is my prefix, this is my suffix, and it's given you the two words in between. Now it's just taking you through a second time to make sure that those are the numbers that you meant to put in. So you're going to put in the first part of the pin again now and hit check. We recognize the words. It's asking if we recognize jealous and powder. Those were the two anti-phishing codes. So we're going to hit check. And Mm -hmm. now we're going to enter four, five, six, seven again. So our dummy pin once again is one, two, three, dash, four, five, six, seven. Mm-hmm. But I highly recommend not doing that. Number. Yeah, yeah, maybe don't do that. But yes. <laughs> All okay. Right. So now we... we have now we have a screen that says new seed words, import existing, help advanced slash tools. And if we scroll down, there's uh, settings as one last option. Okay. And real quick, a, some, a pop-up came on my Mac that says allow accessory to connect. Do you want to connect CoinKite? Cold card wallet to this Mac. I'm going to allow it. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. So basically what we've done is the pin is all set up. The pin will remain the same um, throughout the life of the device unless you explicitly go in and change it later. Okay. So this is now the main pin. um, And in order to change it, you need to remember the original pin. Okay. Um, Right now, the cold card by itself, it doesn't have any keys to any money on it. And so this is where we're going to create uh, new seed words. We're basically creating the keys to your Bitcoin right now on the cold card. Can you explain to people who, again, are just coming in new, uh, maybe they purchased Bitcoin on one of the big exchanges and they don't even know what a seed phrase is or how this works. They understand public versus private keys, but what is a seed phrase and how is it generated? Right. Okay. So uh, the main takeaway here is a private key is a key that allows you to unlock and spend any Bitcoin that you are holding in your wallet. So a a private key would allow you to say, hey, I've got I've got Bitcoin in my cold card and I'm going to approve a transaction and send it to somebody else. Without a private key, you cannot do that. A public key is simply the information necessary to be able to deposit more money into your wallet or to audit the balance, but you cannot spend with only a public key. And actually later on, when once this is all set up, we're going to give the public key to Sparrow Wallet so that we can deposit and audit the balance, but we cannot spend without the cold card. So right. we're gonna have a private key sitting on the cold card and eventually we'll have a public key sitting in Sparrow. But now what people will see on the next screen is a whole bunch of random words. How are those generated? Yeah, so what a, a private key, when you actually look at what a private key looks like, it's just a mess, a string of digits and everything. And it's very difficult to make note of that and secure it easily. Um, there is something called BIP39. A BIP is a Bitcoin improvement uh Proposal? Protocol? Yeah. Man. Proposal, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and so uh, this allowed us to take all of that gibberish and distill it down into easily readable English words, 12 or 24 typically. And so these 24 words that we're going to take down here are very simply just another way of communicating your private key. And so they are sensitive, um, but easier to deal with. And so we're going to make note of them. You can think of it kind of like creating a spare house key, or in this case, a spare key to your safe where you keep your cash. Um, So you treat it like a key, 
You never let anybody get a copy of it. And that includes photos, digital. This is why we're physically writing it down. Mm -hmm. The cold card itself is not connected to the internet. So it's not touching the internet. It's staying in that secure element, that chip that we mentioned. Um, and so it's not going to leave that chip. And your physical copy is obviously not on the internet. You don't take pictures of it. You keep it secure. So yeah, think of it as a spare key to your money. And the order of the words is going to matter. So make sure when you're writing these down that you're not just writing down a list of words in any given order. The order matters. Yes, okay. 100%. So I'm going to scroll back up to the top and I'm going to click on new seed words. That's right. Should we choose the 24 word or the 12 word or the 24 word dice roll or the 12 word dice roll? What's the dice roll? It's time for a quick break to hear these messages from my partners. Fold is the best Bitcoin rewards debit card and shopping app in the world. You can earn Bitcoin on everything you purchase from Amazon to groceries to your Bitcoin conference tickets with Fold's Bitcoin cashback debit card. And you can win free Satoshis every day or even play for a whole Bitcoin by spinning the rewards wheel. You can also buy Bitcoin and stack sats directly on Fold and earn even more incentives and rewards. This is a great app to get someone totally new into Bitcoin and way better than earning airline miles or hotel points. Head to foldapp.com slash Natalie. And if you use my link, you'll get up to 10,000 sats when you sign up for Spin or Spin Plus and spend at least $20 on the card. I'm so excited to share that I have partnered with CoinKite and we are committed to making sure everyone has the information they need to safely self-custody their Bitcoin. CoinKite produces the cold card wallet, which is the cold storage device I am switching to for safekeeping my Bitcoin. It is Bitcoin only, you can verify the source code, it's ultra secure, and as I'm learning, it's easy to use even if you're a beginner. If you head to their site in my show notes, you can find all of their products from cold cards in different colors to seed plates, top signers, sats cards, block clocks, which I have behind me, and more. I'm also in the process of creating some how-to videos on cold card, so watch out for those in the near future. Become your own bank with Bitcoin, and coin kite. All right, back to the show. Good, good old NVK gives you so many options. Okay, so um, the difference between 24 and 12 first, we'll say 24 technically is, is more secure, but if we're being realistic, it's kind of like trying to find a singular grain of sand in the Milky Way galaxy versus the known universe. Like it's, <laughs> the, it's not going to happen. Um, you're going to be fine with 12 words. However, I do recommend choosing 24 because later on, if you level up and you're like, oh, I'd like to use some of these cool advanced features, some of the advanced features are not available if you only have a 12 word seed oh. phrase. Okay. So just keep that in mind. We'll go with the 24 word default. The dice roll, just for people that are curious, if you don't trust NVK and CoinKite that they're really generating numbers randomly in this device and that they've injected something, even though you can audit what the code is doing. If you don't trust the random number generator, you can actually roll dice and add more randomness to the creation of your 24 words. Wow. Yeah, that's probably yeah. too technical and over, yes. over my head. So we'll just do the 24 word default. All right. Yes. I've chosen that and now it says generating. Okay. Record these 24 secret words. All right, so we're going to start. I'm going to record all of these and, and we'll talk through. Um, I'm going to, again, I'm I'm giving my seed phrase out. So again, this is not. This is not so gonna never do this is story. what you're saying. Yeah, no, don't, don't do what I'm doing right now. Um, and I know that this is a little bit paranoid, but I've even heard, you know, don't do this around cameras. Don't mm -hmm. do this with um, speakers on while you're saying the seed phrase out loud. You really do yeah. want to be careful, especially if you plan to store, you know, a good chunk of your life savings. Um, mm -hmm. Be in a room that, you know, no one's looking over your shoulder. Uh, there are no cameras or microphones listening. Just be ultra, ultra careful because, again, you don't want to risk anything. So yeah. we have the device right here. And my first word, I, I think it's meant to be, it's it's news. <laughs> Oh, there we go. <laughs> I, it couldn't have been a better one. This is, and uh, as you're jotting uh, the first few, I will, I will say that this is the most tedious part of the setup process, but it is very necessary. So just as you're writing these down, you know, just 
be careful and and slow and methodical. Just make sure that you're taking them down correctly. And then afterwards, the cold card will do a little quiz to ensure you've jotted everything down correctly as well. Um, but yes, just know it'll take a bit of time and that's okay as you're creating the keys to your money. Okay. And, and here, this is interesting. So I assumed that to get to the next three, you hit the check mark, but that's not the case because now it's asking word 19 is question mark. So I should have just scrolled with my up and down arrows. Yes. Uh, if so. you hit X, I think it will take you back. Okay. Are you sure? Throw away those words and stop this process. That's what it's asking me. <laughs> yeah, you advanced early. So we'll just um just hit X and or sorry, just hit um you you, you want to throw away those words and start and then so there's no way to go back. Unfortunately, no. Oh no. Okay. Well, this is actually really good, you know. So <laughs> You're learning with me. Um, I already, I already now know that I should have, I should have been just scrolling down arrows. So don't do what I did. Don't hit check. Hit the down arrow. So I'm going to start over. That's all right. It's, it's, uh, it, you didn't even. We only got to the first three words, so it's not a uh, catastrophic. You're just going to choose new seed words again. Okay. So my new words are can, follow, and flip. So I've written those down. And again, don't hit the check mark. Don't do what I did at first. Hit the down arrow. Now I see four, five, six, seven. Number four is awake. Five is lip again. Six is bread. Seven is shed. Scroll down. We've got fruit, broom, mistake. And word number 11 is major. Just another reminder, do not give these out. Do not speak them out loud around speakers. Basically find the exact opposite environment in which we're doing this in, yes. and then you'll be good. <laughs> Don't do as I'm doing right now. 13, supreme. 14, muscle. We told you these were random words. Mm -hmm. 15 is action. Scroll down. 16 is snack. 17 is Liberty, 18, Artist, 19, Ill. Last couple of words here. Number 20 is Curve, 21 is Honey, 22 is Coyote, 23 is Urn. 24 is limb and you don't want to hold these on a cloud. Don't, you know, put them on a device that's attached to some sort of cloud that someone could potentially compromise. Don't go taking a picture of it and publishing that anywhere. Um, so now I've scrolled down and now I think it says, please check and double check your notes. There will be a test. Oh, NVK is going to test us. Press four to add some dice rolls into the mix. Press one to view as QR code. Okay, so you don't need to do any of the fancy stuff, the dice rolls, all that. We're gonna we're gonna bypass that. We're going to uh, we're gonna hit the check mark and we're gonna do our quiz, and I'll I'll walk you through how it works. Okay, so word number eleven is honey, major, or imitate, and on my sheet I've written major. So number two, and it will go through. Every single word here. Okay. No way. So we're going to go yeah. through 24. Okay. Word ni number 19 is ill. Word number 14 is muscle. Word number 13 is supreme. Word number six is bread. Word number 17 is liberty. Word number 22 is coyote. Word number 18 is artist. Word number eight is fruit. Word number 10 is mistake. Word number nine is broom. Word number 23 is urn. 
Word number four is awake. Word number 12 is hollow. Word number 24 is limb. Word number three is flip. Word number 16 is snack. Word number 20 is curve. Word number two is follow. Word number five is flip. Word number 21 is honey. Word number seven is shed. Word number 15 is action. Word number one is can. Applying. See if I got this right. Right. Now it's asking enable NFC slash tap. Let's you okay. tap your mobile phone on the cold card and transfer data easily via NFC. You can change this later under settings, hardware on slash off. Uh, so for now, just so you get less questions and, and options as we're doing transactions, we're going to turn this feature off. Okay. Can you explain just sort of what that means for people if they were yeah. to turn it on? So the cold card has a function that allows you to, with your mobile phone, actually tap to transfer basically to approve transactions you can turn on nfc for your cold card and just tap your phone to it to basically get those signatures uh, or those uh, credentials to be able to spend money so instead of plugging it in physically you can tap via nfc perfect okay so we will move forward here how do we say no? It asks enable NFC tap. Do we just hit check? We will say X because we're going to turn that feature off for now. Okay. Now it's asking disable USB port question mark. If you intend to operate in air gap mode where this cold card is never connected to anything but power, then this will disable the USB port. You can change this later under settings, hardware on slash off. Okay, so does it say uh, it's asking if you want to disable the the port? We yeah. do not want to disable it because we're using it. So we're going to say X. Okay, now it says ready to sign, passphrase, address explorer, secure logout. And if we scroll down, advanced slash tools, settings. Okay, so this is your main screen of your cold card. This is just kind of all of the basic menu stuff that you will see anytime you log in to your cold card and go to use it. Um, what we're going to do right now is we need to, we basically set up the entire cold card. The cold card is, is done, ready to go. You, you got ready your for Bitcoin. Words. Yes, exactly. So you've got your pin, you've got your, your backup written down and you're fully ready to go. What we need to do now is we need something that's connected to the internet, your computer, to be able to deposit Bitcoin into a wallet that is, is connected to your cold card in some way. Um, and so we're using something called Sparrow Wallet. And um, anybody that's looking, you can just go to uh, sparrowwallet.com. And I'm sure those, those will be in the show notes, but, uh, and there's a little download button up in the top right. And you basically end up choosing the version of Sparrow that is right for the computer that you're using. So if you're on a Mac and it's a relatively new one, then you'll just download the, the, uh, the appropriate one. If you're on Windows or Linux, whatever it may be, um, there's a different version for the type of computer that you're using. Um, I will make a side note. There's probably a number of people using Windows. Um, when you go to download it for Windows, you're going to probably choose the installer, which will do everything for you and install it for you just by double clicking on it. Um, and then if you're unsure about what type of Mac you're on, it's really simple. You just in the top left of your screen where the little Apple is in the corner of your computer, you click on it and you choose about this Mac and you'll either see something that says M1 or M2, or you'll see something that says Intel. And that will kind of tell you which version of Sparrow that you need. But nonetheless, you're going to download it and install it to your computer. Perfect. So maybe I'll share my screen right now because I just downloaded yeah. this. So I will mm -hmm. share my Sparrow screen here. Okay. All right. So we have this welcome to Sparrow introduction. Sparrow is a Bitcoin wallet with a focus on security and usability. 
Okay. Right. So yeah. we're going to, um, for this intro, because I don't want to overwhelm people with Sparrow. Sparrow is an excellent wallet and you can be as simple or as advanced as you like with it. We're going to go simple with it. And so we're going to kind of blow through a few of these initial screens just to kind of get us set up because I don't want people to get overwhelmed. It's, it's uh, a great tool, but keep it simple and then learn and ask questions as we go. So we're just going to hit next here. We're going to keep going through here. Um, we're, this is basically how we're going to be connecting, uh, to Sparrow normally. And this is how most wallets, uh, work is you're connecting to somebody else's node. And a node is basically just a record of all the transactions of who owns what, and your wallet will check somebody else's copy of the Bitcoin blockchain to see if you have money. Basically, you're just saying like, Hey, is there any Bitcoin in my addresses? Um, so this is just telling you about what a public server is. So we can just hit next. Hopefully in the future, we'll do a node setup. Tutorial. Yes, 100%. Now, this is telling you about other ways that you can refer to other nodes. This would be an example of running a node on your own computer and connecting to it. That will be an advanced thing that you might look into later. So we'll hit next. And then this is another option where you might run a node on your own dedicated device that sits on a shelf, like the one I have behind me right now. And it's just another way to do things. We're going to leave it for now. We're just going to hit configure server. Yes. Stay tuned because I do want to show people how to set up an umbral in the future. Indeed. Oh, it's oh. Uh... yeah. And so that's, that's the intro screen. And then I think you might need to share one more time because it bumped you out of that one window. Oh, there we go. Okay, so all you're going to do here, you don't really need to do anything special. Uh, can you just hit the test connection button? Okay, you are now connected to the Bitcoin network. Uh, so you're using uh, one of the pre-selected Bitcoin nodes that Sparrow often connects to, basically just so you can check your balance. And, uh, and now we're going to hit create new wallet. There we go. Perfect. Okay. So I know this screen looks scary. Stick with me because it's super easy. I promise you. Okay. And if, if you're listening on audio, this, this might be a time where you want to flip over to the YouTube side. I think, I think on the, for the audio, setting up the cold card, getting the seed phrase, pretty self-explanatory, but mm -hmm. this, you might, the visuals might be helpful. So um, I'm going to have chapters marked so that you can just scroll right through and, and head to this part of the video so that you can just see on screen exactly what you would be looking looking at as well. Okay. So this is basically your wallet setup screen where you're telling Sparrow, what do you want to do? Are you making a brand new wallet? Are you importing some sort of wallet that you're dealing with? And so um, earlier you mentioned that, you know, the single signature and multi-signature, it already says single signature here. Basically all the whole top area, we don't really need to touch because we're not doing anything special or technical. We don't need to worry about any of this. So I want you as a newcomer to gloss that over. You're going to look straight to the bottom and it says uh, connected hardware wallet. We're going to click on that. And so that gives you a pop-up that allows you to scan for connected hardware wallets and, and that your, your cold card is still plugged in on ready to sign. It is. Perfect. Now, should so I, should I hit the check on ready to sign? No, we're going to leave that be. We're just going to hit scan. Okay. So you can now see it detects a cold card and we're just going to hit that big blue button import key store. So it's importing your public key to Sparrow Wallet and giving all the information so that you can deposit, so you can check your balance, all of that stuff. And again, there's a lot of technical jargon here. You don't need to know what all this means currently. This is something for later when you get it advanced. If in doubt, look for the blue button because that's always the next thing you wanna do. So bottom right, you're gonna hit apply. Okay, and and just real quick, Ben, for people who are are doing this process and they go, so, so the company that sold me this, they cannot see the seed phrase. There's nothing on their end where whatever words that their device just generated, they don't have a copy of it. Or now that I've, I'm plugged in and I've been plugged into my computer this entire time, this third party application that I'm running, or even just my computer, they have not taken my seed phrase. How do you answer that? So 
with cold card, again, the cold, the the code can be audited by anyone to ensure that's not happening with the, the version that you're running. Uh, Sparrow Wallet is not created by CoinKite. So it's an entirely different, fully open source wallet that we've just decided to use because it's good. And anybody can also go and audit that code. If something were to be malicious, you would need um, cold card to have injected something into their code that would do that and nobody to have noticed. And they would need to be colluding with Sparrow Wallet because Sparrow Wallet is what's getting the information here for the public key. Sparrow Wallet would also need to be able to collude and, and extract that information and somehow relay back to somebody. And on top of it, Sparrow Wallet, as I said, is open source and anybody can audit that code as well. So you've got degrees of, of certainty um, and verifiability that that's not happening. Uh, but furthermore, if you do want to wear that tinfoil hat, that's where you come back for air gapping, because in that case, you don't even ever plug the cold card into a computer. Got it. Okay. Thank you. All right. So let's get back into Sparrow here. Yep. All right. We're going to hit apply. Yep. Add a password to the wallet. Leave empty for no password. We're just going to leave it empty. In this case, I would recommend you do set up a password, but since we're just doing a demo, is, am I okay with no password? Yeah, let's say no password. And uh, just so you know, the password applies specifically to Sparrow Wallet on your computer, which means if somebody were to get into Sparrow Wallet on your computer and not have your cold card, all they would be able to do is see your balance and give you more Bitcoin if they wanted to. Um, mm -hmm. so, so not the end of the world, but you know, if privacy is a concern, then sure you can add a password, but we don't need to. Um, so your wallet is now officially set up and I'm just going to kind of show you what's in front of you. This screen that we're on right now is the settings setting screen and it's a little scary looking. You don't really need to come back here. Um, this was just the initial setup, mm -hmm. but let's look at the screens that actually kind of matter. Let's go up to transactions up on the left, the little tab there. This will be your main screen that basically shows your balance, any previous transactions, um, any incoming transactions, all of that stuff. It's kind of like your home base. What do I have in my wallet and what have I been doing? Um, over on the left, there's also a send button. So we're, let's click on that and see what it looks like really quick. And so this is basically where you set up if you want to send out your cold card. You know, where are you paying to? What Bitcoin address are you sending to? What amount are you sending? All of that kind of stuff is here. And you don't need to know what all of the technical stuff is yet. You just need to know the basics of where am I sending and how much am I sending? That's pretty much it. And then finally, let's take a quick look at the receive screen over on the left as well, just to kind of get an overview of what we're happening. Um, this is an address that belongs to your cold card. Or another way of putting it is if you send Bitcoin to this address, you won't be able to send it back out without your cold card approving that transaction. So let's say, you know, Nat, I know that you do a, a ton of work with Swan and everything. Let's say you had a DCA set up and it was sending to an address from this screen. Well, that as soon as that DCA hits this address, it is now secured by your cold card. It is now in your possession. And unless somebody had your cold card right. and the pin to get into it, they couldn't spend that money. Got it. Now, um, also just to, to remind people, let's say they have they have their wallet backup card, they have their entire seed phrase, but mm -hmm. something happens to this calculator looking device. Uh, they lose it, they bring mm -hmm. it somewhere and they don't have it. Um, they can still access their Bitcoin via the seed phrase and create a new cold card wallet, right? Yes, that is absolutely right. Um, they can at any point, if you grab another cold card, and actually, as a matter of fact, those 24 words are universal. They would work with any other device, any other Bitcoin wallet, whether it be hot or cold. Obviously, if it's a cold wallet and it's life savings, you might not want to put it on a hot wallet, meaning something connected to the internet. But any device, those 24 words would work. So if cold card no longer existed, like you broke your cold card and CoinKite was no longer a company, for whatever reason, 
those 24 words are still securing your money and can be input in any Bitcoin wallet. Great. All right. Yeah. So should I send myself a little bit of Bitcoin here so that we can see what it looks like when you actually have Bitcoin on your cold card? Let's do it. Absolutely. And actually, just for fun, um, unplug your cold card. It's time for another quick break to hear these messages from my partners. Next up, I want to share with you about CrowdHealth, which is a Bitcoin alternative to health insurance. Health insurance costs are sky high today, and you send your money every month to a massive corporation, and then you never see that money again, even if you don't need a doctor. But if you do need care, you end up having to pay even more out of pocket, especially if you end up as one of the 20% of claims on average that aren't covered. CrowdHealth is all about community and the community crowdfunds everyone's health care. So if something happens to you and you need medical care, CrowdHealth negotiates down the medical bill lower than what insurance would be, and then the community helps you cover it. And in turn, you help cover others' needs, which has been so rewarding. I am so glad I switched to this program. And for more information, you can head to joincrowdhealth.com slash Natalie and use promo code Natalie for a discount. I am so excited to share that I have joined Orange Pill app as an advisor. If you haven't downloaded this app yet, you are missing out on connecting with Bitcoiners in your area. The Orange Pill app is building the social layer for Bitcoin and helping to create opportunities for in-person connections and community building. You can create a profile and you will see lots of familiar faces there. And then you can search for Bitcoiners or Bitcoin events based on your location. I am geotagged in my home base, St. Louis, and I'm super grateful because the Orange Pill app has helped connect me with Bitcoiners in my new city. So come join us, download the Orange Pill app and head to theorangepillapp.com for more information. All right, back to the show. Unplug your cold card. And the reason I'm getting you to do this is to prove that you can deposit money into your cold card without it being plugged in. You can continue adding to your savings without the cold card ever being plugged in. You only need to plug it in if you want to spend. So the cold card, when I unplugged it, the screen goes dark. Mm -hmm. When I try to click anything, it doesn't work anymore. It is, is it not the case with these devices, the way that you have hard, hard drives where you have to hit that eject button? Can you just unplug at any time? Yeah, you can just unplug at any time. Um, okay. Yeah, worst case scenario. The only time that you really hope that doesn't happen is if you're in the middle of writing down your 24 words. Especially right. near the end. If Don't you're, do that. <laughs> yeah, so, so be careful as you're setting it up. But other than that, um, yeah, you, you can just straight up unplug it at any point and it just powers down. So how about I get my wallet of Satoshi right. and I can scan the QR code that's right on the screen in the Sparrow wallet. And now I have my, my other uh, phone here. Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm just going to toggle this to dollars and I'm going to send $20 to this address. Add note, it's gonna say demo return. Okay, so now people can see on my wallet of Satoshi, $20, I'm going to hit send. Relatively quickly, I th I believe you'll get a, a little notification from Sparrow Wallet that pops up that says, oh, there's a, a, a incoming transaction. And typically it pops up and yeah, I, there it goes. Um, so, those watching that saw what happened on screen right now, two things. There's a notification that says, oh, you have a, a new transaction. But secondly, if you were looking at the receive screen, you would have seen that address change. And yeah. the reason for that is that every time you send to an address uh, in Sparrow, it will generate a new one. And that's kind of like a, a, a privacy mechanism. So uh, if you just had a singular address, um, and you had multiple different people sending you money, then people would be able to see how much money you have in that particular address. When it swaps it out every single time for a new transaction, it's just kind of helpful not kind of letting people know what's in your bank account, more or less. Exactly. Um, so it'll change. The other thing that I'll note about this receive screen, sometimes it's a good idea to put in a label of where it's coming from. We forgot to do that, but that's okay. We can add it after the fact. Um, but nonetheless, uh, if you know, you're going to receive, you can always type in a little note in the label, but what we'll do is we'll go up to the left where it says transactions and there's our, our transaction coming in. And actually we've already got a, a confirmation there. So, uh, we actually have, 
um, the $20 now sitting, the 64,026 sats are now in oh, your, they, they in your took card. a penny from me, Ben. I mean, I this know. Is- it's that volatility, I think. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, honestly, I mean, can you just take a step back again? This is incredible. I mean, yeah. lightning speed, w- nobody exaggerates when they talk about just the the power and, and this revolutionary technology that is Bitcoin, where you can literally say, I could have been in another country and I would have gotten it in, in the yeah. speed of light and yeah. no intermediary, no bank, no one I had to trust, no one that could censor me. I mean, it. I don't think people appreciate it until they play around with it and actually see it. And so I just, it's never yeah. lost on me, you know? And it's, and it's, sent directly into your secure digital vault that you just created offline mm-hmm. on on a calculator. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Okay. So if I were to plug this back in, can we take a look? Can I, is there a way to see my balance just on the device? No. And I'm going to tell you why. The device is unaware of the internet. That ah. is this. I want you to think of the cold card as, as a literal key. Like the key to your house doesn't know the contents of your house. So exact same thing. The key to a safety deposit box has no picture of what's inside the box. This is literally holding a key to your money. It is offline by design. And so all that you've got in Sparrow is you've got basically the mechanism through which you can deposit money. You've got a mechanism that says, hey, this is my little safety deposit box in the, in the sky. These are the slots you can slide money into so that I have a balance. This is just the key to the box. That's it. Um, so the, the the cold card doesn't know anything about your balance. It just knows that it can unlock money if it's in the box. Okay. Um, but what we can do is we can make sure that you're able to send out of your cold card. Now that's all, right. all set up, let's uh, let's do that. Maybe if um, uh, well, let's let's get in there first. Well, I'll get you to plug in your cold card and put in your pin so that you're ready to go first. Okay, so I'm plugging the device back in. You can mm-hmm. see it right here. If you're watching on video, I'm going to type in one, two, three, my prefix. And then jealous and powder, those are indeed my anti-phishing code words. And then I'm going to hit check. Four, five, six, seven. All right. It says ready to sign, passphrase, address explorer, secure logout, advanced slash tools and settings. Perfect. All right. So you're on the main screen of your cold card. You're all good. It's all plugged in. We don't need to touch it yet. Um, let's go to Sparrow and let's send yourself some money. So maybe we can send it back to uh, your wallet of Satoshi, if you like. Okay. That might be an easy thing to do. Okay, so we're back in Sparrow here. Okay, so we're you're going to hit send. send. And um, so there's two different ways to do this. If you had, let's say somebody had texted you or emailed you or messaged you an a-, a Bitcoin address, you could paste it into the field that says pay to. Mm-hmm. But if you're using something like uh, Wallet of Satoshi and you're sitting at your computer and uh, and you were to hit receive and and that on your, on your Wallet of Satoshi, when you do hit receive, mm-hmm. along the bottom, there's different options of ways to receive. And the one with the Bitcoin B is an on-chain address. Yep. And, then and so, lightning. yeah. So we're going to, we're going to do the on-chain address because um, that's how we're securing our Bitcoin. It's on-chain with the cold card. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's the address we're going to use. And I'll, I'll give you the choice. You can either copy that and message it over to yourself or in Sparrow, there's actually a little camera icon beside the address field. And that'll actually use your, um, your webcam and you'll be able to scan the address just from your webcam on your computer. Okay, well let's uh let's go ahead and try that. Bitcoin. Okay. There's a camera here. There you go. It should be able to scan relatively quickly. There oh, you go. it's perfect. It really is <laughs> Magic, amazing. Right? I mean, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll label this my wallet of Satoshi here. 
And just for the heck of it, let's hit that max button. So you can obviously manually enter the amount over on the left there, or you can mm -hmm. just hit max if you're sending all of it out. The other thing I'll show really quick is see where it says amount. There is a, a drop down arrow. Mm -hmm. Um, if you prefer to deal with the the decimals, like with BTC, you can choose that. But right now it's already on sats, so we'll just leave it there. I'm all about the sats. We gotta we gotta yeah. start talking in sats. My my I portfolio agree. when I look at it, it looks so much nicer in sats. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sats are the standard for sure. Okay, so now the next thing that you're gonna do, you already said I want to send it to this address. Here's my label, it's going to wallet of Satoshi. Here's the amount I'm sending. The last thing I want you to do is down where it says fee. Mm -hmm. See, there's that little slider. Yeah. So you can slide that kind of back and forth. But right now it's saying, oh, hey, that's way overpaid. Or if you go way down lower, it'll say high priority. Let's go for medium priority. So right in the yellow range, kind of in and around the eight, I think. That's probably pretty good there. Let's like 30 cents to send. Okay. Perfect. And this is, again, an on-chain, not a lightning transaction, an on-chain transaction. Um, and so that's basically... For those unfamiliar, if you're saying, well, wh why would I bother paying more or less? It's it's all around regular Bitcoin transactions on the main chain. The fees are dependent on how busy the network is and how much data you're sending. Not the dollar amount that you're sending, but how much data does your transaction require? And you can get into the details of that later. But um, if you set it super low, then you might be waiting longer. If it says low priority, if you set it medium or high, then it'll get through relatively quickly. Right. So I'm not going to go into the little diagram at the bottom. That's a, a question for an advanced today. Um, okay. So so we'll leave that. It's just kind of showing the flow of money out of your wallet into Wallet of Satoshi. But we'll we'll get into the details of all that fun stuff on another one. Okay. So we'll okay. hit create transaction. Yep. Okay, this just gives you an overview. You don't need to, again, you're just saying, hey, it's this money is going to Wallet of Satoshi. It's going from your demo cold card. We can finalize that transaction. And, you know, it's funny because whenever I'm actually using my my cold storage devices and and again total transparency I'm actually switching to the cold card that's why I'm doing this mm -hmm. um, I believe in the product I've had so many people recommend it so I personally will be using the cold cold card now thanks to you not this particular one I'll, I'll do this on my own but um <laughs> but you know that that was what gave me the most anxiety I mean I would sit there and when I was transferring from the exchange to my cold card or cold uh, storage wallet for the first time I was sweating like checking every mm -hmm. letter and number worried that, you know, all of a sudden I could just be sending my Bitcoin off into the universe, never to be seen or touched again. Um, so can you explain just how careful do people really need to be in, in verifying when, when numbers come up, when transactions, you know, things come up on the screen mm -hmm. and you actually need to make sure that what your device maybe says is the same as what a screen might say? Yeah. So good rule of thumb is like, let's, let's say you're sending yourself money from the exchange to your own wallet um, when you copy the address, say to your cold card and you go and paste it in on Swan or wherever or to another wallet that you're sending from, it's a good idea to check, you know, the first chunk of digits and the last chunk of digits of that address and just kind of cross reference and make sure that they look similar. It would be it would be incredibly difficult for a wallet to um, be able to create a very similar address uh, that somebody also owns, that somebody mm -hmm. would be able to steal it to, that's likely not going to happen. But there have been instances of wallets that were malicious that when you go or you get a virus and you go to paste, if you don't check at all, it might just paste in a totally different address. So cross-reference the addresses okay. to make sure that they look the same. And then the other thing, obviously, just due diligence around, am I sending the right amount? Is that right? Yeah. Did I did I didn't do like accidentally, you know, you had the slider for the fee. You can accident like if you weren't paying attention, you slid it all the way to the right and you paid some exorbitant fee to send a transaction. Not great. So just little details like that. Is it the right address? Am I sending the right amount? And is the fee that I'm paying, you know, reasonable? And that's, that's pretty much it. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we're going to finalize the transaction for signing here. Yeah. And so your cold card is plugged in. 
Um, again, when in doubt in Sparrow Wallet, look for the blue button because that's always your next step. All of these other buttons down at the bottom are the advanced stuff that we might use for an advanced video, but we're doing the simple version. We have a plugged in cold card with the pin already put in. So you're going to click sign. And then you can see the cold card listed. It detects it. You're going to click sign. And then it's going to ask you some questions on the cold card. All right, so it said validating and now a screen comes up that says, okay to send question mark. And it has the amount in Bitcoin, not Satoshi's 0.0063082 Bitcoin to the address. And again, this is where, you know, these numbers and letters come up. You want to, you want to verify. Mm -hmm. um, this is something that, this is when I was first setting these up. I'm like, oh my gosh, every single letter. Don't, <laughs> don't have too much anxiety. It's not that difficult. The network yeah. fee is going to be a tiny amount of Bitcoin, press OK to approve and sign transaction, X mm -hmm. to abort. So we're going to hit check. Yep. Okay. And so on the screen, see. there you go. Yeah, you see that bar come across. It basically says what you've basically done is the equivalent of um, when you have to sign a, a credit card transaction or something. It's you giving that signature saying, yes, I approve this specific amount of money going to this specific address and no more and no less. And so it now has that signature. All you need to do is tell the Bitcoin network about it. So you're going to broadcast that information out to everyone. And as soon as this goes off, the there you go. The world now knows that Nat has sent, not specifically you, but Nat has sent Bitcoin from her cold card to another address or from the address it was in to the new address. Nobody knows that it was a cold card. Nobody knows that it's Wallet of Satoshi, but it has been sent and that transaction is now proliferating around the Bitcoin network. And here on my Wallet of Satoshi, which I'm going to bring up again, it actually says how much Bitcoin is on the way into my wallet. Perfect. So this is unconfirmed. It's waiting. It's in the mempool. It's mm -hmm. not a day where they're verifying a ton of NFTs, hopefully. Yes, yes, 100%. <laughs> and we brought the screen back up of the demo cold card. So I just went back into transactions and you can see I'm I'm about to drain this entire wallet. So whoever's watching and, this and wanted to drain first, you can't do it. <laughs> and you actually got a confirmation already. There you go. <laughs> Woohoo. All right. Well, this is, see, I mean, it is so much easier um, than I really thought when I was entering into this space. I thought this was so techy, so over my head, so impossible um, that I almost want to, out of convenience, just trust a third party like I've always trusted mm -hmm. the banks. But, you know, it really it really is important to take the time to learn this. Maybe some people decide ultimately not to do it. Um, you know, I don't know why when it's this easy, but it's just so important because, in our world where we're seeing what's happening with these banks and the financial system that's literally propped up by debt, by by credit, we don't have that money. It doesn't exist somewhere in a vault. You know, I think it's really important for people to take self-sovereignty, take yeah. responsibility over your financial future. This is a an instrument of empowerment. I really, truly believe that. You can do this anywhere in the world. This is not, I'm not, we're in, I'm in America Ben's in Canada. You can be anywhere in the world um, using these devices. So um, I just I just really want to stress that it, it's a lot easier than you think. It's much more approachable. And if you have questions, you know, put them in the in the chat. Send me a message. Send me a DM. I'm happy to you know go back and hopefully we'll do a second video. But um, but it's really easy. And Ben yeah. made it even easier. So thank yeah. you. You did it. No problem. Um, I, can I show you one last thing before we wrap here? Absolutely. Yes. Okay, so we just did our transaction. So see up the top of Sparrow where it says Wallet of Satoshi? Can you click on that, that little tab? Yeah. So every time you do a transaction, it makes its own little tab for what you're working on. Mm -hmm. Once you're done with it, once it's sent, you can hit the little X to get rid of that tab. So now, now it'll go away and you're back in your wallet. But also the cold card itself is a tab and you can actually X out of that. So let's just try just in case, because somebody that watches this will probably do it and then go, where'd my wallet go? It's mm -hmm. not gone. Don't worry. Just hit the X where it says demo cold card up at the top of uh, your Sparrow wallet. Okay. I hit X here. Okay. Yep. Okay. So this is kind of, this was the main screen of Sparrow 
um, whenever you open it up and you don't have a wallet explicitly open in, uh, I think it's the same for Windows and Mac up at the top of your Mac screen uh, with Sparrow wallet selected, you're going to click on file mm -hmm. and then open wallet. And that will open up a spot where you should see your cold card demo wallet. It's a little pop-up and you should be able to click open. There you go. There you go. Easy yeah. to open. Again, if you're watching on video, this is, this is a little bit more visual than on audio. So um, yeah, I mean, it looks pretty simple. Can you also get Sparrow on your phone? Let's say I have my iPhone and I want to toggle between the two. So what I recommend for, so Sparrow wallet is a desktop wallet, but you can actually still view your cold card balance um, from a variety of different options. So when I'm using my cold card or, or even just viewing my balance on my phone, I like to use nunchuck wallet, okay. um, which is awesome. I've done videos on how to do it. And actually nunchuck wallet does work with the NFC feature where you mm -hmm. can tap your phone to your cold card and do transactions that way again for another day. But, uh, you can, you can definitely, uh, track your balance and deposit into it from Nunchuck wallet on your phone. Awesome. Cool. Yeah. Well, let me get back into a full screen here. Um, just before, you know, we leave Ben, we haven't had you on, on the show. And one of the reasons why some people tune into this podcast in particular is they love the backstories. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'd love to hear a little bit more about your journey. You know, I know you're from Canada. Um, mm -hmm. I've had, I've had the pleasure of seeing you and meeting you and your beautiful family in different mm -hmm. conferences around the world. Um, how did you end up finding Bitcoin? And can you share even further back a little bit about just your upbringing? Yeah. So um, let's see, how far back am I? I? I love when you asked Odell this question. He's like, well, I'm not going to go that far back. <laughs> I know. He was one of the only, a lot of people are very open about this question, but Matt, Matt was not. <laughs> that's that's okay. Um, yeah. So, you know, I, I kind of, uh, I grew up, um, you know, not having, uh, not having a lot of money and also not having a lot of education in and around, um, in, in and around anything financial. Like I, I did not have that fi fiscally, uh, financially responsible, um, upbringing. And so uh, money to me always kind of escaped me, I suppose. Um, I, I had a problem where I, I wouldn't save and, you know, things through my childhood that just kind of led me to believe that like saving was just kind of a, a losing game and, and why bother. And so, uh, but I always had a little bit of interest in, I, I wasn't a technical person, but I also liked um, playing around a little bit. You know, I'd, I'd play with different devices just for fun. And, you know, I was uh, not, not to the point where I'm like coding or anything like that, but you know, I liked my occasional little nerdy fix. And so sometimes I would get fed articles about, um, you know, Bitcoin as it was in its early stages. And, and I often would see it and go, huh, that, maybe that's interesting. Maybe I'll take a look at that. But much like everybody, you you think, oh, I missed the boat every time you see it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I did that a good handful of times for for a year or so, and um, and then in one of those famous kind of blow off tops, I'm looking at it, going, okay, this is either a a giant Ponzi scheme or there's something more to it. And so I ended up going down a rabbit hole. I actually read about it for about three months before I ever actually got any Bitcoin. Mm. Um. And, uh, and I, I got my first Bitcoin wallet and bought my first little bit of Bitcoin, 50 bucks, hundred bucks, something like that. And, uh, you know, I had it in my own wallet actually at first. Uh, and, but the, the same week that I bought, uh, was the week that Mount Gox imploded. Uh, oh, wow. I didn't have, I didn't have money there, but all of my friends that I had said, Hey, I'm looking at Bitcoin. I might get some Bitcoin. And then the week that happened, I'm getting all these messages. I hope you didn't find any of that crap and, and sending me all the articles, but it was the recognition. And, and I'm sure you've noticed this too. It was the, it was the recognition that the reporting around it was just wrong. Yeah. The, the, the messaging around it was Bitcoin failed when really it was a poorly run business that failed. And I was lucky enough that I had read enough and understood enough about Bitcoin at that point to go, well, if this reporting is totally wrong, then actually Bitcoin is still working as expected. And so 
barring a catastrophic failure of what I think Bitcoin is and and why I think it's important, unless that changes, then why would I stop using it, stop learning and stop accumulating? So I just kind of kept on going through that whole bear run as everybody assumed Bitcoin was dead and it paid off. So <laughs> years later, again, after tearing my hair out for a while, I, I, I learned enough and felt confident enough to kind of start helping other people learn about how to use the tools. And um, yeah, it's been a wild seven years of the channel, but nine years playing in Bitcoin. So here we Amazing. are. Amazing. I mean, I, I really truly um, admire what you've, what you've done because there are so many people out there from different backgrounds, you know, busy in different jobs. They're trying to figure this out and you make it so easy and approachable. Um, what's something that you wish you knew at the beginning of your journey that you, you know, now, especially embarking on all of these tutorials with different products and services. I'm sure there must've been a lot of learning lessons along the way. Yeah, I mean, I, th there's a couple that stand out. One is, um, again, to, I, I'm going to give him a second shout out, but uh, Odell's Odell's famous quote: "Stay humble and stack sats." There's there's no substitute for working hard, spending less than you earn, and just saving in Bitcoin. Um, it may seem like it. It may seem like a genius for a period of time. But by and large, most people, uh, when they they get a little too cute and they try to gamble a little bit and get ahead, um, would have been better off if they had just stayed humble, stack sats, do what you're good at, and and save in Bitcoin. Um, I think that is is a huge lesson that I've learned over the years. And there were many mistakes where I could have had many more sats today, uh, but we all do it, and that's the price of tuition. Um, the other thing that I'll say is. Um, and I'm going to give a shout out to Stefan Levera for, I think he coined this term, but um, analysis paralysis, where you get into a situation where you, you force yourself to stand still because you try to do too many things at once. As you're learning in Bitcoin, always simply ask, what is the next singular step I can take to level up? And so I'd say, you know, obviously a good trajectory is one, get off zero, get some Bitcoin. Two, learn how to use a hot wallet. And three, get into cold storage. If you can get those first three steps, then you can start playing around and start learning some of the even cooler stuff like running a node or like some privacy stuff or lightning or you know, those are all cherries on top of the foundation of self-custody and security. So I would say start there one step at a time. Don't worry about doing too many things at once. It's a process and that's okay. That is such great advice. I really appreciate your time and your help. Like I said, you've made this so, so easy. Um, You guys can get your cold card with a special discount. The link is in the show notes. Also a link to all of Ben's BTC sessions. Great tutorial. So you can learn how to do some more advanced things. Um, hopefully he'll come back on the show to teach me a couple of more, more things with both the cold card wallet and maybe some other devices. So th Ben, thank you so, so much. No worries. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much for watching the video version of this show. I really want to hear from you. If you have suggestions or guest recommendations, you can email me at natalie at talkingbitcoin.com. Please subscribe if you want more content and I'll see you next time.